Welcome to Let's Talk Humanitarian, Parlons Humanitaire, and reaching conversations with humanitarian leaders and humanitarian workers to open eyes, heart, and mind. This is a program by Kalio Institute, your online center for humanitarian aid studies where humanitarians train humanitarians. My name is Amelie Yanguifes, and I'm really delighted to be the host for this conversation with Jan Thomas Himstra, the head of country support management team for UNDP Crisis Bureau in New York. Hi, Jan Thomas. Hey, how are you doing, Emily? Good. Thank you so much for, um, for accepting to be here with us today uh, in this uh, conversation. Let me introduce you a little. You have such a vast experience, um, more than 25 years, um, being a development advocate, a practitioner, um, and manager for the United Nations Development Program, UNDP. You have served in a series of duty stations, among which Palestine, Bosnia, Iraq, Nigeria, Syria, Ukraine, and Yemen. You uh, an expert uh, in traditional UNDP areas of governance and environment, uh, also in conflict programming and post-conflict transition. You like to focus on resilience and early recovery and positioning UNDP during and immediately after humanitarian crisis. You designed and rolled out UNDP's global systems and procedures for immediate crisis response. And we will really want to, to know more about that during our interview. As a development communicator, you're very active on social media, uh, notably Facebook and Twitter. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave the, um, the, the details of your, your Twitter address uh, in, the, um, in the comments. You have your own podcast. What's the name of your podcast? My podcast? podcast is in development mm, okay it's not so, as rich as i want it to be because podcasting is a very labor-intensive exercise as you probably know so i don't get to it as much as i want but i i love it okay and um and you also facilitate a daily webinar on um on covid19 which i understand is an exercise you started at the beginning of the crisis for undp uh, staff yeah, I found that uh, in the beginning of the crisis, when we were all forced to go on Zoom and on, on sitting at your laptop all day, I missed the community of UNDP. Everybody did. Mm -hmm. But rather than uh, you know, sitting back and say, what, what can I do? When, when can I go to the office? Actually, I decided to bring people around in a webinar every morning, 8 o'clock Brooklyn time, as I said. And, and we were just going through some simple subjects, bringing people together, having a quick chat over a coffee, and then, you know, half an hour. Not more than that, so it wasn't very time consuming, but we did some 150 of them and, and actually they were a big success because people were actually tuning to it every day like you tune for the radio or something. You turn yeah. it off when you don't like it, but you, you hang in when you do and you contribute when you want a very easy going type of, uh, type, of, uh, type of webinars, not too complicated, not too deep but just to connect people and to, to keep mm. having the impression that we're this global organization, right? Even if we are hit by a virus. Over. Wow, thank you. Um, really interesting how, how you can build community yeah, through this technology that uh, we, we react so much against sometimes. Um, so you, you are from the Netherlands originally, yeah? And, um, and now you work so for UNDP Crisis Bureau in New York. And um, for some of our audience, uh, hearing UNDP, the United Nations Development Program and Crisis Bureau may, may, may be almost surprising. So can you explain us what is the role of a crisis bureau and the, and the role of UNDP in crisis? Yeah, thanks. You mentioned it already when you did my bio. I mean, we, we're convinced in UNDP as a development organization that, you know, development and the foundations of development are actually have to start already in crisis and in humanitarian type of situations. You know, we don't wanna do humanitarian work for too long, right? Only as long as it's necessary, saving lives, getting people back in business. But after that, development takes over, right? So as UNDP, we are convinced that we need to be there early on. That's why you find very sizable UNDP programs in Yemen, in, in Lebanon, in, 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 the, in, the, in, in what we call typically humanitarian places, you'll find UNDP doing early recovery or nexus type of work, as we say. Mm. Try to uh, contribute to the humanitarian phase lasting 
as short as needed, right? Um, so that so that the country can start thinking about itself, putting itself back together rather than be dependent on on import of food, of of, of or distribution of water, and all those things. However good they are, we don't want that to last forever, right? Mm. So it's really much supporting um, pe uh, people, countries, and institutions to get back on their feet. No. Yes, I mean and one one uh, one signature program of ours is. This cash for work, for example, I mean, rather than giving stuff to people, which again, I, I mean, I, I, I love it because we, we are in business to help people, right? So when they need water, we need to give them water. Yeah. But the moment it is possible, we prefer to give them some job, right? Even if it's yeah. to clean a street or to cook something or to make something uh, so that they can have an income and have their own dignity back. Because holding up your hand for food and oil and water it's not dignified for people, right? It's not a life. Uh, so, so that is what uh, UNDP wants to work on from the very beginning, but all the way into the development phase. Hmm. Thank you very much for for this um, uh, this very visual um, uh, explanation of what is the role of, of UNDP in, in crisis. And so, you are the head of the country manage the country support management team. So, what is this team about? Can you tell us a little more about its role? Basically, we, I have 30 people working here that, that are particularly looking whether our country offices, uh, we have a country office in, in 140 countries, in every single humanitarian country office in the world as well, um, that our country office in crisis get what they need from their headquarters. Mm. So we have money for them. We do have people for them. We have technical advice for them. They, they, they can uh, also get consultants from our side. So I'm running all those facilities that directly support our country offices in crisis country. And for that, I have a small team uh, here in New York, but actually since COVID also, they're all over the place. I have people yeah. in Germany, in <laughs> Bangkok, in Afghanistan. So, I mean, yeah. we are everywhere actually. Okay, thank you. And, and I understand one of these um, tools that you have um, uh, available or facilities, uh, like, like you mentioned, is the Express Roster, right? I mean, just to the Express Roster is one of those, uh, those elements. I mean, an organization like UNDP is, is quite large, so we have a lot of staff. So one of the rosters I'm running is for UNDP people to go from here to there, right? If we have mm. a specific expertise in one country, whether it's programmatic or operational, and, I, and in another country needs it, I have the mechanisms to bring people in the right place at the right time. But very often, even though we're a big organization, we depend a lot on the next layer of expertise, which is very often consultant, right? People who are not immediately associated with UNDP, but are ready to work in UNDP. And so um, it was 10, 12 years ago that we set up this express roster that is meant to alleviate the, this pressure that is there on UNDP staff. Particularly when big crises happens, you know, we, we need additional people like 20 or 30 or 40 sometimes. And that you cannot bring that just from any other country because these people, are, UNDP yeah. people have a job to do. But yeah. if we can find consultants who have the time to go there, I mean, that is our next resort. So uh, we have the express roster. There is currently five, 6,000 people on it. Uh, and and, and um, from there, we can bring the right expertise to our country offices also at the right time, because some of these mechanisms that we're having, once you're on the roster, for example, in UNDP, you could be, I've seen people deployed in two days. We do the terms mm -hmm. of reference today, we give you the contract tomorrow, and tomorrow afternoon you're on the plane. Wow. So, so for this um, express roster... I understand it's open to people who are not then UNDP. It's these people outside. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm part it's of meant the Express for people, roster, yeah. so like yes, you. it's yes. it's uh, you know, yeah, you and, and I, I I really enjoy it. And 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 here the idea is to to interview you because you know Kalyu Institute is a. Uh, and has a, a master on humanitarian aid and and international cooperation, and we have thousands of students, and uh, many would be maybe great expertise to, 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 to add on to the roster. And they will definitely be very interested in, in knowing more of the, um, about the roster. So who can apply to the roster and how do we do it? Well, everybody in, in principle can apply. I mean, but of course, in those areas where UNDP is active. I understand mm -hmm. that, that most of your uh, Kalu Institute clients and students are humanitarians. 
I mean, what I'm picturing, of course, is not pure humanitarian work, right? We do not distribute water. We do not do a lot of logistics. We don't fly in airplanes full of food. There, you, you, that's humanitarian, right? But livelihood experts, early rule of law, supporting traditional systems of, 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 uh, of, of coping of people, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of capacities that are very close to humanitarian, but not quite. But I'm sure among your uh, among your students, there are a ton of people that could actually apply. So you can actually go to a website of ours. I mean, um, uh, I, the best way to put it, you go to, to Twitter, ex, uh, Express Roster, yes. our Twitter account. There you find the hyperlink to the place where you can apply. And when you apply, you actually see the whole list of capabilities that we're looking for. You tick the ones that you um, um, that you are good at, and then you hang on your CV, and then you will be vetted by our technical teams. Mm -hmm. And then within a couple of days or, or weeks, you were on the roster. And from the moment you're on the roster, we also agree with you on your daily rate and those kind of things. Everything is pre-agreed. So that yeah. by the time we need you, we call you. You yeah. say, I'm available, not available. We do our quick TOR and you're ready to go. So the roster is a way for us to be much quicker. We don't have to advertise again. We don't have to make a long selection, short list and long list. We don't do interviews at that moment in time because we already get that done when you are, uh, you know, when you're enrolling on the roster. Hmm. And, and you were mentioning this roster is like 10 years old? Uh, roughly 10, 12 years old. Actually, 10, I was, years old. I was mm -hmm. lucky to be also among the initiators of the roster. Wow. Because I was working in a crisis bureau in another capacity also 12 years ago. So it's one baby that I picked up again after 10 years and we're bringing it to next levels, honestly. It is becoming really big. Uh, just to indicate to you, the first 100 days of this year until now, we, yes. we deployed 300 people from the roster. Hmm. And, and, and that's, um, that's huge. And that's huge. And, and, and like you mentioned, no, sometimes we, we, we believe that in the United Nations, the things are slow and it's difficult. And, and like you mentioned, all the way this roster is thought is to enable a, a, a really quick uh, deployment. Mm -hmm. and, and I've experienced it. So you, you can immediately just go um, once, uh, once the country uh, agrees on your profile and, and it's clear that, uh, that you are available and, and that you're the right fit. Uh, for, for the emergency. So you were mentioning the next level. W what is the next level for you um, of the roster? Well, there is, there is a few things. I mean, um, um, we have now, because of the success and speed of the roster, it is actually not confined to uh, crisis type of work only. Uh, we have now opened it up to all work that UNDP is doing. So also governance experts, um, environmental experts, uh, modeling experts. I mean, it's, it's basically the entire breadth of a development organization, all those profiles we're sourcing now. So um, we have gone way beyond the crisis, um, uh, the crisis level. Uh, second thing we have done is that we have also really tightened up contractual um, uh, processes. Uh, I actually have a team working for me now directly that can actually sign those contracts overnight. Because, mm. uh, you know, in some situations, of course, particularly crisis situations, I mean, every hour counts, every day counts. Yeah. Maybe not in terms of, you know, uh, not in terms of people dying because UNDP is not a humanitarian agency. But for, for, for the development perspective to be brought into the picture, there is yeah. really no time to lose. And, yeah. and, and, and there is no reason why it should take three weeks for people to finally get to a place where they really need it after an earthquake or, or a, a hurricane, but also in some conflict type of situation. So I'm, I've tightened up the contractual procedures also so that, I mean, easily, uh, I'm not exaggerating, two days is enough for us to, to fly you to somewhere if that is needed. Hmm. And, and um, are there specific competences uh, that you find difficult uh, to... to, to to, to have on the roster? Can, can you share with us uh, so that maybe some of the people who are listening to us say, hey, that's, that's, that's what I have? Well, there, there, are, there are types of uh, expertise that we find uh, difficult to find. I mean, in the first place, there's language. Um, I mean, UNDP globally tends to be English oriented. So the more, the more into niche languages we go, I mean, already French is a bit more difficult, but Arabic, Portuguese, I mean, we were uh, going on the surge missions to Mozambique recently, yeah. where Portuguese is actually, you, you don't do anything without Portuguese. So 
finding Portuguese-speaking people was a challenge. Of course, it can never be as rich as finding English-speaking people, but we need to have a certain core of people in every language. Arabic, uh, very important for us. So anybody speaking one or more of those languages, we're always very happy to enroll you. Uh, then there are also uh, particular profiles. I mean, uh, recently, off recent, let's say, uh, we are a lot involved in, in we're, we're having big plans for stabilization in the Sahel particularly. And that's where there is a profile called civil military cooperation, you know, yeah. where the people that are talked to the military and, and that, that strategize with military people, talk their language, the people who have that background, actually. I mean, if you have worked in some uh, defense setup and you, you are knowledgeable, those kind of profiles are very high in demand because we don't have a whole lot of them in UNDP. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, we if you follow our Twitter handle on the Express roster, that's also where we where we drop those particularly difficult vacancies. So uh, that's that's where you can really see what is the the flavor of the day and 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 whether your particular profile is is uh, is among the most uh, most desirable at that moment in time. Thank you so much, um, Jan Thomas, and we will definitely um, uh, give all these um, these uh, details and these uh, places where to go and and be connected to to the roster. And um, to close this interview, I would like to ask two more personal questions. The first one is, I mean, all your, I mean, your career, almost a big part of it is 25 years uh, in the development sector, in the crisis um, uh, sector in the, with UNDP. I'm wondering, have you ever dreamt or envisaged at some stage to, to, to do something else? Well, definitely, definitely. I mean, I, but then I never do it because I really love what we do, mm. what I do. I mean, I, I am from an early point in my career, I, I decided I need to, to be in some position where I have a direct feeling that I'm helping others, countries, people, regions. And in, a, in, in, in my world, in this UNDP, I, I have found that. Like, like yeah. sure, the Kahlo Institute and the humanitarian uh, students would have the same dream, right? We don't like to do just anything in this world. We like to make a difference. So that that is definitely what I um, uh, what I like to do, and I don't think I will leave. But if if there was something, I mean, I am uh, I'm a I'm I'm very fervent cook, and and I I mean, if you give me some restaurant somewhere with some vacancy, even cutting <laughs> vegetables and stuff like that, which I have been doing, I, I I would do that. Or also trading places with you. I mean, I I love to make radio. I I love to uh, entertain. Of course, not on a, in a light manner, but I like, like I love to create community over over these uh, what mm. is called unpopular means these days. I like Zoom, to be honest. Yeah. I don't mind. <laughs> of course, I, I would like to meet you in person, but for me, this is not any worse than meeting mm. in person. So to create community, to have people chat, to make them at home, despite the fact that we cannot see each other, uh, I have a little bit of a talent for that, and that's also what I what I don't mind doing, and I'm doing it all the time on the side, like these webinars, uh, setting up uh, the, the training courses. We're also running training courses from our unit, uh, mm. so so those are a few of my uh, my 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 side hobbies, let's say. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. And. Um... From all this experience that you have and, and this passion and this commitment that you've shared with us, in, what would be the one piece of advice you would give to our Kalu students? Well, I mean, I'm, I will talk to you, I will say something about be, being in a bureaucracy, which you invariably as students, you will also end up in WFP or in uni, UNHCR or in a big NGO. Um, it's a, one of the tip, one tip I want to give you is that to be yourself. Even in a big organization, nobody's asking you to just obey and do whatever they tell you. That's not the point. I believe that big organizations can also be composed of very creative and very self-going, very outgoing people who can actually do what they want. Because if you're a good fit with an organization, you should be able to do what you want, right? Otherwise, the fit is not good. And that's how I felt in UNDP. People say, isn't it too small? Isn't it, how can you be fast? I can. I know how to do it, and I'm mm. doing it. And that goes for everybody, I believe. WFP can be even be faster, or WFP can be more gender sensitive. Your WFP can, UNHCR can be more this and that, and you can be the part of that. Uh, and if you don't feel the fit, go somewhere else. 
because if the fit is there, you can actually be totally yourself in a big bureaucracy. That's how I feel like a fish in the water, in fact. There are limitations, but certainly I have the feeling I can make a difference. And if you don't feel that anymore, then it's really time to look for something else. Wow. Thank you for, for this inspiration. Thank you for your time and thank you for all this information about the roster. That is a, a, a beautiful uh, opportunity to make a difference and to bring our difference and who we are to the world and, uh, and to the crisis response. Thank you so much, Jan Thomas, for, um, for your knowledge uh, sharing and, and, and for your, your time. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Cheers, Emily. Thank you. Thank you.